at well, for the European Commission uh, Joint Research Center, uh, right? Monica and Lorenzino, who will uh, who will tell us about like uh, a recent paper that has been built at the gover at the European level, which is APIs for government, right? So now we talk about you know this introduction about you know what what technology is doing, but maybe we need a higher level and the politics at some point the policies have something to do. And yeah, we're really glad to have you, Lorenzino and Monica, here to uh, to present your the conclusion, found the conclusion, your report and the, and your conclusion uh, there. Hello, Lorenzino and Monica, how are you? Hello. Can you hear Hello, me? Hello, Mike. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and just as a surprise, uh, the 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 person who will do the the question at the end will be your co-author, Mark Boyd, who will join us as a as a guest to do the questions for you uh, about the report. I invite you to share your screen and present you what you have for us for APIs for governments and public sector. So I'm asking, Coming. can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear you. very well. Um, I'm afraid that I have problems with my camera on in here. So um, I will, uh, if if it is okay with you, just not to wait uh, to waste any any mom, any time. Yeah, I will just um, speak it through, and uh, yeah, and Lorenzino will will uh, share the slides. Yeah. That's perfect. I started my presentation. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it perfectly. Yes. Okay, great. So, Monica, okay. please. Yeah. So. Um, First of all, thank you, Mehdi, and uh, indeed um, the whole API Days community for giving us the, the, this space to present the, the outputs of our research. Um, I, I would like uh, to, to especially thank uh, my colleague, uh, Lorenzino Bacari, who is uh, very well known in this API community, um, for helping me to drive you through the, our research journey on, on the APIs in government. My name is Monica Posada. I am a research fellow at the Digital Economy Unit of the GSC uh, of, the, of the European Commission. And uh, I am currently leading the API research team. Uh, for those of you who, do, who doesn't know, uh, the Joint Research Center is the European Commission's knowledge service. Um, and our mission is to provide independent scientific advice and support to the European um, to the European policy making. So, um, if you can move to the next slide, please. Um, APIs, the new normal and governments. Next slide. Did, it, did you go to the next slide? Yeah. So, uh, well, allow me to say it aloud. 2020 has been a very long year. Um, Europe's resilience has been tested to unexpected limits by a seemingly unstoppable, invisible, tiny enemy. Unstoppable and unbeatable, but for the scientific community who has made an incredible work to, to get to know this enemy and to put the means to combat it in record timing. Um, APIs may have played a big role in this um, in, 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 uh, in, in, in this during this health crisis. For instance, it have may played a role on this change of data among scientific communities. It has it may have played a role on the data flows um, that uh, that were feeding the governments for making decisions on resource on resource planning and allocations such as hospitals, beds, personnel, um, also for governments to communicate to, to, to society about the health crisis and its social, socioeconomic impacts. Um, APIs may have also played a role in the control and monitoring of the spreading of the disease. So for instance, uh, we know that API enabled, enabled location applications um, have been used to monitor unwanted gathering of crowds and uh, also indeed have been used for, for tracing uh, contagions. Um, in this context, um, EU, the European Union has learned from experience, for this experience, and is putting means to strengthen its resilience to be able to, to, to mitigate the effects in the case of a new shock of the same nature. 
Um, on the data side, this will require truly analysis of the situation. So um, was the data change infrastructure efficient? Um, could it be improved and how? And in this kind of context, um, is where um, actually our uh, work, uh, the work that we have been doing in the past years, um, uh, sets, uh, sets its roots. Um, but still, let's go to the sunny side on, on, of this, because the good news is that um, the year is about to end. Uh, the vaccine seems to be almost a reality, and um, it's time for New Year's resolutions. Europe has made its homework. Um, and it has created an unprecedented recovery fund to cope with the aftermath of, of the pandemic. Um, and this fund has a very positive vision, and it's actually called the next generation of Europe. And uh, this fund aims as, as at uh, boosting the recovery and to build a modern and more resilient European Union. Um, and actually, it aims to convert the, the, the challenge that uh, the pandemic has put us into, uh, into an opportunity to thrive and lead the transaction, the transaction, the transition, sorry, towards a green and digital, and, and a digital globe. So, um, some questions that we pose to you all. In the aftermath of the crisis, do APIs have a role in the recovery from, from the crisis? Well, our research concludes that uh, they do, um, because APIs are foundational components of the digital transformation. And the, digital, the reason behind this is uh, the high flexibility that APIs provide to digital infrastructures. Um, in the sense, APIs are modular, easy to scale, and easy to monitor in terms of use, performance, and behavior. And this information can be useful to improve processes and operations, to assess potential threats and support the development of mitigation measures, and to identify key partners, both internal and external to organizations, to build up innovative digital solutions. So, these evidence, the evidences that we have gathered bring us to think that the APIs will be indeed the foundational components of the construction of the, new, of the new European digital fabric. Next slide, please. So, um, why we do think so? So, one of the new Commission, Europe, um, the European Commission priorities is, uh, was to build a Europe fit for the digital age. This priority has, in, has been reinforced in the midst of the crisis. And specifically, the next generation um, Europe budget, which is around 750 billion euro, um, approximately 20% 20, 20 of these amounts will be allocated to investments in the digital and the transition between the digital and, and, and the green deal. So, um, as you can see in this slide, uh, there, we, we have pointed out to the direct hooks that we see in, the, in this, um, in this strategy, European strategy, um, with, the, with the APIs. So APIs will play a role in the uptake of AI applications. APIs will be key to support the creation and orchestration of data spaces within the European data strategy and also will, will enable the technical integrations of actors and systems, which is critical for the fostering of the innovation of industry, including a small and medium enterprises. Next slide, please. So why APIs in government? And this is one of the first questions that we answered in our study. No doubt that the COVID has accelerated the, digital, the digitization of um, processes. We are now years ahead of the forecasted advances in the transformation process. Governments are expected to keep the pace in this transformation. In particular, citizens, business and all the societal actors expect to have means to connect digitally and to interact with governments in a seamless processes. So the capacity of APIs for connecting systems and actors and to monitor transactions in the digital sphere 
provides API-enabled government organizations with high flexibility to innovate both public administration and public and, and policy making by, this, by streamlining information flows to support decision making processes uh, and, and monitoring uh, and monitoring. So last but not least, before giving the floor to Lorenzino, um, our study concludes that uh, indeed APIs are enablers of the digital transformation. And you can find plenty of evidences on, on all the reports that we have produced. Now, my dear colleague uh, Lorenzino will navigate you through the main highlights of the study. Lorenzino, the, the floor is all yours. Okay, thanks a lot, Monica. Thanks a lot uh, to the API Days for inviting us for this presentation. Good morning, everybody. And uh, let's say I will introduce the second part of the presentation, which is the uh, detail uh, as for the time that we have actually, which is limited, but I try to summarize what was concretely our study uh, did during the last uh, three years and which conclusions we we, um, we have done. We have uh, put in our, uh, that are described also in our uh, reports and outputs that Monica was showing in the previous slides. I'll talk about our research methods, what we have discovered about the trends, cases, and cost and benefits of APIs in governments, which API standards, specification, and best practices we have found that could be useful to support the API adoption in government. And at the end, I will show the API framework we have built together with Monica, uh, Mark, and other uh, people of, of the team, uh, the API framework for governments, and some policy recommendations at the European Union level. Let's say we started asking ourselves what was the state of the art of the API strategies in government. We have organized some workshops and surveys and so on. I will explain to you later. And which kind of action should be taken for, by government to adopt the APIs? So we analyzed the trends, definitions, the glossary and policy context of APIs in government. We then passed to analyze the landscape of uh, uh, API cases, uh, strategies, standards, and best practices in Europe, and we identify which were the, which are actually the key enablers, driver barriers, and risks for the adoption of APIs in governments. We analyze uh, the material and the data set, the data we collected, and we, uh, I mean, identify the costs and benefits uh, of APIs and, and some challenges and some social highlights. And then at the end, on the third part of the study, we build this API framework and we give some thematic areas and technologies to focus on for governments and we gave some policy recommendations. Let's say we adopt some research methodologies that I try to summarize here in the slides. So we perform, of course, some best research. We analyze a lot of government websites about APIs, but not only, also the EU policy websites that are related to regulations and other documents from European, the European Commission and other European Union institution about APIs that can support the adoption of web services and API in governments. We base our study in previous studies about e-government and digital transformation of government and the public sector. We also use uh, quite a lot of data from uh, API repositories like the one that we could, uh, let's say, um, extract from the programmable web API directory. And we also analyze the data catalogs, uh, like for example, the European data portal that they provide their digital assets, uh, like uh, the open data and data sets in general, by using APIs. Not all of them, of course, but some of them, they provide very interesting APIs. Then we made some surveys uh, to understand which were the API strategies in the member states at different uh, administration level, national, uh, local, and regional level. We also asked for the validation with the survey of uh, the framework that we present in few, in few slides. And we also went to uh, both the general purpose, uh, like the API days, and specific domain conferences, like the one of the Inspire Directive, which uh, its uh, goal is sharing uh, in, uh, let's say, geographical data sets uh, all around Europe uh, by uh, in the cross boundary, between cross boundary member states. Let's say. We made some focus, uh, focused interviews with specifically uh, 7K studies. We also deal and interact with API experts, both from the private sector and the public sector. We ask the private companies and the private sector in general, which was their best tools and methodologies to 
using the API adoption for government with a different goal, of course. The government goal is not a profit, but it's a social benefit of citizens. And we also test our framework in a specific pilot with the Region Lombardia in Italy. We also organize quite a lot of workshops, identify the API strategies and talking directly with the main uh, people and uh, let's say um, API uh, architects, but not only also API strategists and policy maker on the meaning of API and the implementation of APIs in their governments. We even organize and be part of uh, Inspire uh, Hackathon to test this API uh, and which we're going in specific domains and we organized quite a lot of API days events during the last two years. So we started of course analyzing which was the trends in government APIs. We use the data sets mainly from the programmable web uh, directory and we, I, we saw that the government a, the API in government they were following the trend of the other uh, implementation of APS and adoption of APS in other sectors, like, for example, the science one, the banking sector that had a great uh, um, increase of the use of APIs, uh, um, especially after the PSD2 uh, legal instruments, let's say. So we said, yes, the APIs in government are increasing uh, a lot, especially during the, the last uh, past five or six years, let's say. So let's study and conclude some uh, analysis on the APIs uh, uh, cases that we extracted. We, um, let's say, dealt with more than 250 uh, cases, the one that were published online and the one that we discovered by using the surveys and workshops and so on. We clusterized these three types of APIs, let's say, that government are using, but it's also the cluster that we can find in the private sector. So we found example of single APIs that were treated like a product, uh, like for example, the one of the Netherlands Statistical Office that they share their more than 4,500 4, data sets with their APIs that are used not only internally by some other departments like the Ministry of Internal Affairs, of course, but also by different developers to develop and to build their apps on these APIs, but also for some social, uh, for some social, uh, let's say, uh, goals, like, for example, the open spending of the Open State Foundation uh, Association, let's say. We also discovered that some um, governments, they um, did a bit more, right? So they created their own uh, portfolio management of APIs and they even published their APIs uh, registries on national portals, like in the case of the French government, um, uh, let's say, uh, portal and, and a website. So you can find this API registries is also connected to the apps and to the data set uh, um, to the data set directories so they are all uh, connected and they are linked uh, between these different uh, digital uh, there is a link between these digital uh, assets but there are also some other administration that made an entire ecosystem around the apis like the one that i put here of the e015 system in lombardia in lombardy in italy <clears throat> so they try to connect not only the apis of the regional administration, but also APIs from other public and private uh, sector uh, institutions, and they create ecosystems around some uh, some domains. This is a very uh, interesting experiment. They started with the Expo some years ago, and then now they are continuing improving their uh, digital ecosystems uh, portal, let's say, on, on the web. <coughs> So just to summarize some benefits we extracted to, from our uh, analysis briefly, there are some internal benefits of APIs in government. There is the efficiency gains for governments. Uh, surprisingly, we found that the APIs, uh, uh, apart from the uh, first moment of, let's say, changing the implementation of the old and legacy system, there is a reduction of costs uh, of, uh, let's say, between in, in the general in, in government. We had quite a, a good feedback on, on this. There is, of course, an improvement of the quality of digital assets, because when you share these assets with APIs, you know perfectly that you have to cure your uh, data sets and your services that are behind the APIs in a different way, because you open your door to external, let's say, um, external consumers of, of APIs. And there was also, we noticed an improvement. Uh, we had a, a feedback on improvement of internal processes and digital and digital public services that were built on APIs. 
that we have also shared with the external. And we also have a feedback on the announcement of reporting flows in government processes because with APIs, you can analyze the state of the art, who is using what, uh, which kind of services are best used, are requested more, and so on. And also, uh, we all notice the improvement to access to data sets, both open and not open by, by government, let's say. So this improving the transparency of the open data movement uh, in, in governments. Other uh, benefits that are, let's say, more external uh, oriented uh, towards other institutions uh, and other organizations include the foster of innovation in the public sector. Like, for example, in the case of the X-Road uh, uh, platform of uh, Estonia, this is a typical case that uh, Petteri Kirimaki also shown uh, quite uh, uh, sometimes, a lot of times, in the API days as well. So we follow together, we discuss together about uh, the best platform for APIs and so on, not only with Estonia, of course, but also with other governments. There is an enablement of digital uh, ecosystem, as I was telling before, not only in the case of Regione Lombardia, of course, we have other uh, many cases. In the case of the API Agor platform, for example, this uh, middle platform uh, built by a private company was built on both on private and uh, public sector APIs and data sets. And then some other uh, developers, they develop their apps on this platform that was a, a kind of collector of uh, the digital ecosystem related to the, the agriculture in France. And there are some economic opportunities. You see in the slide that, for example, when the Zaragoza city, they decided, <coughs> sorry, to share their digital assets uh, by using APIs, a lot of developers, not only from the public sector, but specifically from uh, small and medium enterprises, they started developing their apps in the transportation sector, in the health sector, and even in the, there is an app that I discovered that was for adopting, uh, let's say, dogs and cats and, and pets uh, based on the public uh, public APIs, let's say. And there are also other applications, like, for example, the sharing of public uh, uh, documents of the public sector. And this goes towards the once only principle, for example. So. This doesn't come for free. Of course, we identify the main costs when adopting APIs, which is the change and the engineering of the legacy system in the in the government. You can see on the left side of the slide how many APIs, and these are just cluster uh, of uh, uh, APIs in uh, uh, at the France national level. They say when they are decided to re-engineering their, their system towards API, they found that there are many and they have to, I mean, to do a, a lot of work to change their, their system and to clusterize and to publish their APIs in a harmonized way. Of course, another challenge, the main one we have identified, but as you know very well, because there are a lot of presentation about cybersecurity on APIs at the API days as well, when you open the, the API, it's like opening a new door, right? So you have to be sure that the cyber, the, the security of your digital assets is uh, is uh, protected, is it's it's adopted as much as, as maximum as possible, and you have to adhere to, to to some legislation, like for example in the case of the protection of privacy data of the GDPR regulation, of course. This also uh, needs a kind of communication uh, efforts from the, uh, let's say, the API implementers and manager to uh, be uh, uh, to make aware the policymakers understanding and support the adoption of APIs. APIs, as uh, Marco Panabianco of Aria of Regione Lombardia says, are interfaces without a face. So you don't realize that you need APIs still. You, I mean, you go in deep and you understand their importance as a connector glue of different applications and different uh, systems in an administration. So then we ask at the beginning to our stakeholders, to the member states, governments, and the, uh, let's say, in the workshop and service we did, what do you need more, right? So, and they answered, they said that we need more. What we need is recommendations, okay? So identify best practices, common guidelines. Then we need the community building. That is what we are doing after the API days, but not only the API days, but also organizes some uh, seminars, webinars, and other workshop within the European Commission and other with other European Union institutions, right? So what we did, we started collecting uh, the, the concrete things, so the API standard and specification that are useful for the API adoption in government. We identified some clusters and which kind of document and standard exist, and we publish them in, in a report. Okay? 
And then we identified uh, some uh, uh, best practices all around the world, starting from for almost 4,000 documents. Then we uh, extract the diamonds of these uh, documents, like the more important best practices. And by using these best practices uh, spread all around the world, we uh, build a framework for the API adoption in government. This framework uh, goes into, two, into three different levels, the API strategic, uh, let's say, level. So it gives some recommendation at the strategic level, gives some recommendation at the project management level, and some other recommendation at the API operational and technical level. And these three levels are uh, built on, on four aspects. They take into consideration the policy aspect, let's say, in which uh, you have to support the policy uh, goals of the public administration with APIs. Then you have to measure this uh, support, how the APIs are supporting, and of course, extract your conclusion and, and, and tra track the, the, the way forward for the adoption of APIs. Then, you of course, you have to have a platform vision, uh, decide about the components and implement this platform at the whole of the government level. Then you have to uh, talk with, to have, to think about the governance, right? So you start with the people at a higher level, then you make a multidisciplinary uh, teams to implement these APIs, and then you have to appoint some uh, API product managers. And then you think about the forming guidelines or processes for the adoption of APIs in government. Uh, we build on these uh, main clusters, what we call 12 uh, uh, proposals, an online tool in which any, it's, it's a free tool in which any um, public but also private organization can test the maturity level of the adoption of this uh, framework. You can find the, the link in the slides. And then at the end of the study, we give some general uh, recommendation for the, the European Union uh, governments. So the first one, of course, is to explicitly adopt APIs in government to find a common way and a harmonized way to adopt APIs in government in public institution. The second one is to create and improve the API culture in government, not all the people they know about API, they, they, uh, sometimes they don't understand the importance of this technological uh, enabler as, as uh, Monica was actually uh, highlighting in the, in the beginning of the presentation, they are the connective glue of not only within the government, but also outside government to build digital ecosystems. To use, we suggest to use and validate our API framework that we just uh, proposed, but it needs to be improved and continuously adapted to uh, new uh, challenges, let's say. And the fourth and last uh, uh, recommendation is to be, become digital ecosystem aware, so not close the um, mission and the goal only within the government, but also open it to um, external institutions, both private and uh, of the public sector. And by the way, this is the purpose of the APIs, right? So I leave the floor now for the last uh, uh, part of the presentation again to Monica. Thanks for uh, your attention. So thank you, Lorenzino, for your enthusiastic presentation on, on the conclusions of the role of uh, the APIs in the digital transformation of governments. We are running out of time, so I will be very quick. Uh, so. The, um, the work is not yet finished, so our team is currently investigating API essentials for public sector innovation, in particular the technical, organization and legal perspectives of, um, of the adoption of API for the, product, for the public sector. Uh, we are analyzing on the technical side, the life cycle management, discoverability and security practices. And on the organizational and legal side, we are evaluating the legal context of APIs on accountability, liability, service level agreements, and, uh, and uh, intellectual property, property rights. By the end of 2021, there will be a new GRC publication. So um, we have uh, created a number of um, as, 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 uh, research methods a number of events, multi-stakeholder, in which we put together public, private practitioners and decision makers in order to, to explore solutions and strategies to better profit the API infrastructure for a secure, connected and efficient digital government. If you want to participate uh, or be updated on the advances of, on our research, 
uh, please join our API for digital transformation community. Um, there you will find our reports, uh, the, the, our published data sets, surveys, tools, and the news about and details about our multi-stakeholder events. So um, our presentation came to an end. I would like to thank you for, for your attention. And uh, I'm not sure if we have any, any time left for, for questions, but it will be more than welcome. That was wonderful overview. Thanks, Lorenzino and Monica. Uh, it's Mark Boyd here. I was one of the um, co-authors and Medi's asked me to step in and just um, help wrap up the uh, session. We are uh, right on time and I know everyone uh, has a lot um, to think over from both presentations this morning. Um, and there's also the partner villages to get to. But before we do, um, the, the uh, um, there's also some um, people in the uh, in the booths that are saying that they've got examples. So Axway, for example, have got some examples on APIs in government. Um, there's been some other speakers. You've heard from vendors at some events recently, haven't you, Laurentino and Monica? There was Isabel spoke about um, API security for governments. Yes, we, we organised the events in, uh, in London, in API Days London, where we have uh, three different experts. One was Eric Wild, uh, who was talking about the governance of APIs. Then we have Isabel uh, Moni, she spoke about the security aspects. And we also have API specifications from Darren Miller. So uh, it was a very interesting and very fruitful event on which we, we obtained a lot of inputs from, from, from the private sector too, on practices and so on, yeah. Right, that's a good point. We'll um, we'll wrap up in one more uh, in a couple more minutes. But just quickly on that point, so a lot of the people coming to this conference today, they will be from um, private sector um, uh, companies and uh, the private sector industry. How can they work with governments around APIs? How how would you suggest they get involved or offer their services or? Um, uh, or, or, or make make themselves known to governments now that there is this the framework going. There are these opportunities to to drive that. And so, it, so indeed, uh, there, there will be. I mean, the first thing that um, um, that we that, that the governments will have to to have in order to um, enable the, the the digital interaction with uh, external pack actors is to have a reliable um, API infrastructure. So indeed, we will, we will recommend um, uh, government organizations to, if, if they, they, they want to, to start uh, building up on this rela digital relationship with the external world, to, um, yeah, to have a look at, our, uh, at the framework that we have produced to get some ideas on what are the steps that uh, might get them to um, a reliable and robust infrastructure that uh, can orchestrate um, the links and uh, with uh, minimizing the risk on security and, and, and so on. Yep. Um, Lorenzino, you were, did you have something to add there? Yeah, let's say the, the, I think the API days is also a, a wonderful place on which the private and public sector, they can share their experiences. And that's what we have done since the beginning uh, with you, with Mechdi, with other actors uh, that comes from different fields. Uh, let's say we, we also, we organize both, uh, um, let's say, public sector um, workshops, uh, but um, mainly we, we try to go to the uh, events like API days because uh, the API movement started uh, some years ago in the private sector and we have a lot of uh, things to learn from uh, from them and that's uh, what Monica was also citing and that's why we are organizing this workshop that we try to put together the public and the private sector in in the one of um, the one of Helsinki for example we organized in, in September there was a discussion panel in which the public sector they make their they, uh, let's say they, they say about their issues on security, for example, and on API management li and life cycle. And there were some experts like Alan Glickenhaus that were telling uh, about their experience with this kind of, of um, 
of issues and how in some uh, private sector examples they deal with it, but also making some public sector uh, uh, organization best practices, let's say. This is what we need, actually. We need to learn and to make this knowledge transfer from both the sides. Huh? And for example, the public sector is quite expert in transparency and open data movement. So we can also translate this, our knowledge to the private sector as well. That's wonderful. Thank you both for a really great discussion. It's, it's exciting to see the governments are getting on board with APIs and pushing this forward. It's been wonderful to work and be involved with you both. Um, okay, thanks. Thank that's you. every that's